Good morning, TPMC. Today, I'm off to my former lecturer, Dr. Kwa Kim Kyok's house. What am I going to do there? Well, why don't you join me and find out? Thanks, Dr. Kwa, for having me over. Some introductions first. Dr. Kwa is currently the registrar and lecturer in Missiology and Interdisciplinary Studies at the Blibical Graduate School of Theology. She has also taught on topics like culture and society and ethics. But today, we're going to have some food and talk about food. Christmas is coming! It's my favourite time of the year and right now, in the weeks before Christmas, we are in the season of Advent. Advent is a season reminding Christians that just as we look back with joy at the first coming of Christ, we can look ahead with joyful expectation of Christ coming again. It's a season reminding us to prepare ourselves and the world for the coming of Christ and to receive Him with joy. This Christmas, we are also encouraging all our church members to prepare for something. Prepare to invite your friends to your homes for a Christmas Eve meal and share the joy of Christmas with them. So Dr. Kwa, do you have some pointers on how we can do this well? Well, first of all, be natural. As hosts, we often feel that our homes must be perfect, that there are fresh flowers, and that we have to personally cook a four-course meal from scratch. Then we can have people over. That puts a lot of pressure on ourselves and also on our guests. They feel beholden and obliged. Also, as hosts, we sometimes feel or come across as the ones who have to do everything and we are the ones who are giving. But when we allow guests to contribute, then it becomes a shared meal, a shared table, and there is a deeper connection. Remember the story in Luke's Gospel of the two disciples on the road to Emmaus? Remember how it was Cleopas and his friend who urged Jesus to stay with them at the end of the day and then to join them for the evening meal. They were the hosts and Jesus was their guest. But when he was at the table with them, he took bread, he gave thanks, broke it and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened and they recognised him. So the guests became the hosts and the host turned out to be Jesus himself. Cleopas and his friend did not stop Jesus from breaking bread, but received it with thanks. So accepting something from someone is also a sign of friendship. So the lines between hosts and guests can be interchangeable. So we don't need to be hung up about being the perfect host. I see, okay. So that means I don't have to be stressed about having people over and that's a relief. But then are you saying we can do things anyhow? No la, of course not. You need to prepare, but let the guests feel like they are also contributing to the meal and to the occasion. So if they offer to bring something for the meal, sure, let them. Most of us won't go to another person's home for a meal empty-handed anyway. Yeah, as Asians, we always stress out about having people over, isn't it? We often feel paisi, there's not enough food, and everything must be nice, our house must be super neat and tidy, and the food we give must be the best. It's, I guess it's because we want to honour our guests? Yes, and that's a good thing to do, because it's important that guests feel welcomed. But don't overdo it lah. Just because we want the guests to feel uh, welcomed, we also want them to feel at home where they can, you know, as it were, put their feet up and be comfortable. Mm. So are you saying it's not just about what we provide, but also how we host, so our posture. If we look like we've been slaving over a meal and being stressed out about it, then... Yeah, then the guests will feel, they'll, they'll feel it and they'll feel uncomfortable. Well, the house needs to be tidy, but doesn't have to be perfectly spick and span. Most guests are polite and know the boundaries. But if they're going to be young children, be prepared that they will wander around and may pick up things. So just be wise about closing doors where you don't want people to cross and keep breakables out of reach from a child. But be yourself. 
be natural and do your best. If you forget something or mess up, it's okay. And if guests mess up, don't make a big fuss, just clean it up. You know, when I have people over, I'm quite comfortable to tap out food. I don't feel like I have to cook everything from scratch. And I will say that it's been tap out. Okay. Um, can you speak also about food itself? After all, food is a big part of our lives. We all have different attitudes when it comes to food. Some of us merely eat to live, you know, get it done with, and others live to eat. We really enjoy food. And some enjoy cooking and preparing it for others to enjoy. And during the festive seasons, we usually overeat or use food as a source of escape. Is there a biblical worldview for us when it comes to food? Is there even such a thing? And I even heard that at BGST, the school where you teach, there is a module called Theology of Food. So interesting. So yeah, tell us a bit more. Yeah, there are so many issues surrounding food and eating, as you say. One of the writers said, food is a holy and humbling mystery. Well, first of all, all living creatures, not just human beings, but also plants and animals are dependent on food to live. We eat to live. But there is disordered eating, whether it's too much food, greed, or too little food, anorexia. And this is the source or reason for many illnesses. Food also reminds us that we are dependent people, and that there's this big system we depend on farmers to grow food, people and supply chains to import and transport it, cooks to prepare the food. So the fact that we have food on the table means that we are dependent on so many others. So much of our working life is about putting food on the table, isn't it? The Apostle Paul actually said that the one who is unwilling to work shall not eat. Actually, as we go through the Gospels, we notice that Jesus spent a lot of time eating. And after all, he was criticized by the Pharisees for always eating and hanging out with wine bibbers. What can we learn from him? Yeah, so we have a good example, isn't it? But very profoundly, Jesus gathers his church around a communal meal in the Holy Communion. So, but aside from that special meal, notice that he also did much teaching in the moment during meals, because something came up, or because someone was there. So meals are great places for good conversation. I think for Jesus, fellowship with people and eating together came together. So that says something about the importance of meals, isn't it? So then are there special foods that they can be used for outreach or for bonding? Mm, I don't think so. I mean, I usually prepare food that is easy for me, that works well with the number of people that are coming and the layout of my place. I think these are the factors that we need to consider when having people over. Like, how many chairs do you have so that everybody can sit comfortably? What plates and crockery you have? Oh, and please, let's avoid using disposable. It's a bit of an effort to watch, but it's so much better for the environment so much nicer to use proper plates and utensils. That's true. So Agnes, tell me a little bit about this Christmas outreach that you're encouraging your church members to do. What would you like to see coming out of this event? Well, this year we've been encouraging you, church, to reach out to your one more. We've been in the midst of the pandemic for close to two years. Close to two years of social restrictions, isolation for some, fear and uncertainty for many people. But church, let's use the opportunity and occasion of Christmas to bring hope, joy, peace and love to our one more. Like what Dr. Kwa said, you don't need to stress out on hosting your friends for dinner. They won't remember the food as much as they enjoy your company. The one simple thing you can do, invite your one more to your home for dinner on Christmas Eve then join in online to participate in our online Christmas Eve service at 7.30 for a time of carols and sharing by Pastor Ben. Well, wow, that sounds like fun. 